Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at integration by parts. And in particular, I'm going to have a look at this question here, which, which is called really a two-stepper. And what you notice here is we have the integral of e to the power of x cos pi x. Now, if we try to integrate this, we're going to end up with another integral that we're going to have to do with an e to the power of x and a sine pi x. And then if we integrate that, we end up back where we started with an e to the power of x cos pi x type function. So we're kind of going around in circles. So I just want to show you how to deal with that kind of a problem. Now, in order to do integration by parts, we're going to have to use what's called the inlate rule. So in stands for inverse functions like sine inverse, cos inverse. L stands for logs, A stands for algebra, so anything involving an x, an x squared, x cubed. T stands for trig functions, and E stands for exponential functions. Now in our particular function, we have an e to the power of x and we have a cos x. Cos x or cos pi x here is a trig function, and e to the power of x is an exponential function. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to put the trig function first, and then the exponential function second. So just to rearrange this to the in integral of cos pi x times e to the power of x dx. Okay, so let's start. Now in order to do integration by parts, we use this formula here. The integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v u. So what we're going to do is let u equal to cos pi x and we're going to let dv equal to e to the power of x. So if we have u equal to cos pi x, what we want to do first is differentiate that. So we have du dx is equal to, well if you differentiate cos x you get minus sine x. So it's going to be minus sine pi x in this particular case. But because this is not an x, it's a pi x, we've got to differentiate the pi x. Pi is just a constant. So when we differentiate pi x, we get pi. That will give us du is equal to minus pi sine pi x dx. Okay, now on the right-hand side here, we have dv is equal to e to the power of x. So you just integrate both sides in this case. If you integrate dv, or 1 dv if you like, you get v, and integrate e to the power of x, easy enough, you just get e to the power of x. Okay, so let's just uh, substitute these into our integral here. Now at this stage I'm going to ignore the limits. I'll put the limits in later once I have the integral completed. So I'm going to call this integral here i. You'll see why in a few minutes. So if we substitute in our v and du here using our formula, we have the integral of u dv is equal to u times v. So in other words, our i here is going to be equal to u times v. Well, u is cos pi x. We have cos pi x here. We've got to multiply that by v. Well, v is just e to the power of x, so actually I'll put that here at, uh, at the beginning. And then we have the integral of v du. Now v is e to the power of x, and du is this expression here. Now what I'm going to do here is, with this expression here, I've got this minus pi out here at the front, which is a constant. So what I'm going to do is bring that outside the integral, put it here, and it's a minus pi, so that'll change this to plus pi times the integral here. Now I'm just going to put the rest here, so I've got v, which is e to the power of x, and then dv, which is sine pi x dx. Okay, so you can see here that we've ended up with another, with the integral of another trig and exponential function here. And if we try to integrate this, we're just going to end up with something similar to this back up here. So we're just going around in circles. So to get around this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this integral here, j. I'm going to take that out and do it separately. So I'm going to look at j out here. 
So j then is going to be this particular integral here. So it's going to be the integral of e to the power of x sine pi x dx. So what we've got to do is we've got to integrate this by parts and see where we end up. Okay, so it's the same kind of thing again. You've got to let u equal to, we've got to rearrange this. This is a trig function, exponential function. So this would be first, this is second. So you've got to let u equal to this here. So u is going to be equal to sine pi x. We we'll just differentiate it. du dx then is going to be equal to, if you differentiate sine, you get cos pi x, but then you've got to differentiate this using the chain rule and you get pi. So that gives me du is equal to pi cos pi x dx. Now we've also got to let dv then equal to uh, e to the power of x, similar to what we did before. Integrate both sides, you get v is equal to e to the power of x. Now let's uh, just substitute that in. So that will give us j then is just going to be equal to u times v, well u is sine pi x, v is e to the power of x, so we just put that at the front here, minus the integral of, we've got to multiply v by du, it's the integral of v du in other words, so it's going to be v times du. Again here we've got a pi at the front, so what I'm going to do is put that out here in front of the integral sign, and write out the rest. So we've got e to the power of x and then we've got cos pi x dx. Now this is actually the integral that we started with. We started with the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the power of x cos pi x dx. So this is actually i, this part here is actually i. So really what we've got here is j is equal to e to the power of x sine pi x minus pi times i. This i here is this here. All we did was we took out j and we did the integral and we ended up with this here. So let's substitute that in up here. Okay, so we're going back to i again. So i is just going to be equal to e to the power of x cos pi x plus pi times e to the power of x sine pi x minus pi times i. So this here is the j part. This is this part here. e to the power of x sine pi x minus pi times i. Okay, so let's just multiply this out and see where we end up. We've got e to the power of x cos pi x plus pi e to the power of x sine pi x minus pi squared i. Remember this is i here. Now what we can do is we can take this, bring it over to the other side and we get i plus pi squared i is equal to e to the power of x cos pi x plus pi e to the power of x sine pi x. So all we've got to do now is just factorize out the i here. So we've got, let's see, uh, 1 plus pi squared times i is equal to e to the power of x cos pi x plus pi e to the power of x sine pi x and then what we've got to do is just divide across by 1 plus pi squared. So that'll give us e to the power of x cos pi x plus pi e to the power of x sine pi x all divided by 1 plus pi squared. And we can add a c here because we didn't include the limits here. This is our constant of integration. Okay, so at this stage what I think I'll do is introduce the limits. Remember our original function 
was i and that involved the integral of e to the power of x cos pi x dx from 0 to 1. So let's do that then. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 e to the power of x cos pi x dx that's our original function is going to be equal to this here. So it's going to be e to the power of x cos pi x plus pi e to the power of x sine pi x all over 1 plus pi squared. We want to integrate between, between 0 and 1. Okay, so all we've got to do now is just substitute in our limits and do the algebra. So that's going to be equal to, I'll come over here to give myself some room. Let's see, we've got e to the power of 1. So that's e to the power of 1 cos pi times 1 plus pi e to the power of 1 sine pi times 1 all over 1 plus pi squared minus e to the power of 0 cos pi times 0 plus pi e to the power of 0 sine pi times 0 all over 1 plus pi squared. Now let's do all of this. We've got e to the power of 1 which is e and then we've got the cos of pi. So the cos of 180 degrees is just minus 1. Plus we have pi times e and the sine of pi is just 0 over 1 plus pi squared minus e to the power of 0 is 1 the cos of 0 is just 1. Remember pi times 0 is 0. The cos of 0 is 1. Plus pi times e to the power of 0, which is 1. And the sine of 0 is 0 over 1 plus pi squared. OK, so we're almost there. Let's see, here we've got uh, minus e. This just becomes 0, and that's over 1 plus pi squared minus here we've got 1 this just becomes 0 over 1 plus pi squared I'll just come over here now and just turn it into one fraction so 1 plus pi squared is on the bottom in both fractions so we just end up with minus e minus 1 and that's it that's the definite integral of e to the power of x cos pi x dx from 0 to 1